Could you think invented the concept of total football? If you said it was the Dutch, you'd be somewhat right. But Rinus Michels was not the only man to introduce that concept. At the same time, in the Eastern European country of Ukraine, there was a man named Valery Wobanowski. He invented total football around the same time and revolutionized the game in the Soviet Union, guiding Dynamo Kiev to 13 domestic league titles and two cup winners' cups, as well as the Soviet Union to the Euro 1988 final, missing out on the title thanks to this wonderful strike from Mark Van Basten. However, Valery never won the Champions League, so I decided to give him the chance to do just that. This is why I turned back the clock and would put 30 year old Valery in charge of Dnipro Dnipropetrovsk if that club still existed. But there is a Phoenix club named SC Dnipro 1 who are playing in the Ukrainian first division. This is where Valery will start. We'll then simulate into the future and see what happens to Gulf Cup of Nations winner back in 1996 as 96 turns out to be the percentage of you the viewers who are not subscribed to the channel. Valery told me to mention that trophy, and I think it's just a coincidence. This is how Valery starts. He has 115 current ability and 200 potential ability out of 200. Wait, let me fix something. I think that Valery will quickly leave Dnipro though, as he seems to be more ambitious than the club. So, how did his first season go? I've got to say, Valery is off to a good start. Dnipro finished 6th in the league, just 3 points of the top 4 spots. But you may wonder why they will play in the Europa League. That's because he won the first trophy in the first season, the Ukrainian Cup. Dnipro also played in Europe, but got knocked out by Legia Warsaw in the qualifying playoff for the Conference League. But will Valery even guide Dnipro to the European League phase? He's got interest from the top European leagues and he chose one. FC Non from France which Valery guided to 8th place in Ligue 1, just 2 points of European football. But you would be surprised about what Valery did next, because he moved to Fulham in the Premier League, and he probably knew what he was doing, as Non barely stayed up while Valery guided his new team to 11th in the Prem. I think that with the right transfers, the Ukrainian will be able to change the top half. However, after the full start of the season, Valery would be sent packing for the first time. Fulham did get better, and the team was relegated as a result. So the question is, where is he heading next? To the same tier as Fulham, to Derby County in the Championship, which did well under Valery as they went from the threat of relegation to a safe mid-table finish. In the second tier of England, Derby stayed in that zone of the table in Season 6, dropping just one place behind. But Valery didn't want to stagnate, so he went to the club he became a legend of. Dynamo Kiev, without even being sacked, he instantly started cooking, dominating the league and partaking in the Champions League. Dynamo qualified for the knockout playoffs. Just, but got eliminated by Villarreal at the very first attempt. It was still enough to put Valery Ubanovsky II to the Ukrainian Hall of Fame. But Dynamo didn't stop there, as the team played in the Champions League in Season 8, albeit they finished in the league phase. However, in the league they bottled it. And by bottled it, I mean that Dynamo would win the league if they won the last game. But since they failed, Shakhtar took the crown, which they failed to defend in Season 9, allowing Dynamo to win again. Valery's team went for a domestic double, winning over Shakhtar in the cup final as well. In Europe, the team went on to qualify for the knockout players for the Europa League, where the blue and whites got knocked out by Fenerbahce. What happened in Season 10? It's another domestic title for Dynamo, this time 7 points ahead. The Champions League wasn't that successful as Dynamo went out in the league stage. It looks like Valery is building a dynasty in the capital of Ukraine with his third title in a row combined with domestic double. Dynamo also qualified for the Champions League, where they again got eliminated in the knockout playoff, this time by Paris Saint-Germain. Season 12, league title, Champions League league stage and a loss in the cup final over Shakhtar. There is not much to mention here, apart from season 13, in which Dynamo lost the title by a single point, but at least won the cup. And again, the Champions League league stage. That was still enough to make Valery a club icon again though. And he would transform to be a legend a year later. That would happen thanks to another domestic double and a Europa League round of 16, crashing out on Juventus. Next two seasons brought exactly zero titles to Dynamo. Both were won by Shakhtar, as well as only a league stage of the Champions League and good news, the round of 16 in the Europa League. The number lost out only on penalties to Atletica. But if you want to make a comeback, there's only one way. In season 17, Dynamo took back the championship, just one point over Shakhtar. The pair met in the classic derby in the cup final, which Dynamo won too. And in Europe, Dynamo finished on an impressive fourth to qualify directly to the round of 16 of the Europa League, alongside Dnipro and Shakhtar, albeit from the playoff. Then they met the Swiss side Savet, which they got one better off, but lost out on those penalties to Braga, who went on to lose the final to Fama Lissau. I love this game. Season 18 brought another shift of title winners though, but if you were looking for a new champion, you'd be disappointed. At least things went okay-ish in the Europa League, as Dynamo qualified for the knockout playoffs, but lost there to Girona and to PSV in Season 19, in which the team went on to become typical Belgium in Euro 2024. I simulated that tournament a hundred times, and if you want to know why I mentioned that country, 
Check it out. Anyways, Dynamo went second again and lost the cup final. At this point I'm wondering, are we going to stay here for the rest of the video? And I guess we will, despite Dynamo losing out in the league and the knockout playoffs of the Europa League in season 20. That would change in season 21 to a title win and league stage of the Europa League. This starts to get boring. Lost the title and got to the Champions League league stage. Another title loss, but this time the knockout playoffs of the Europa League. But things went better in season 24. Not only the number won the title quite comfortably, but also went to the Europa League, where they finished fourth in the league stage. They then won over Stad Ren in the round of 16 and got one better over Sporting Club de Portugal in the quarters. It would be a fairer story if they can beat Salernitana in the semi-final. Sadly, they didn't missing out on the final on penalties. Next season though, Valer is a free agent. What? Turns out Dynamo barely finished fourth in the league and got to the Champions League league stage. Since this is the first time Dynamo finished below second in Valerie's tenure, this doesn't look good. But what is more bizarre is the reason for the sacking. Turns out he didn't get sacked due to poor league position. Instead, the board felt the club needed the change. That is bizarre. Valerie spent almost 19 years in the club and at least the board acknowledged that. But let's be honest, you've never seen that message. Ever. I think that after this long period of time in Dynamo, we'll wait a bit for the next- He's a manager of Ukraine?! The previous manager got sent packing after getting 0 points in the Euro 2048, as well as relegating the team in the Nations League. Valerie was hired to turn things around and he did just that, winning all games in Nations League C. But that was expected against Lithuania, Latvia and Liechtenstein. Ukraine qualified for the World Cup with relative ease, losing only two games. However, the nation did not get a great start. They only collected four points and finished third in the group, but they were good enough out of third place teams that they qualified for the knockouts. There they met Netherlands, who they dismantled 4-0, advancing to round of 16. They left it late, but got one better over Norway in extra time. The Faraday story could end on Spain the quarters though. And it did. But I still need to say, it's a fantastic run for the Ukrainians and another proof of Valery's managerial talent, which was further displayed by getting Ukraine promoted to Nations League A. I know this isn't a major trophy, but you won't believe what happened next. In the middle of the Euro 2052 qualifiers, Valerie went to Saudi Arabia. Now guess what? The Saudi Pro League is not available on FM, at least in the base game, which means we cannot see anything other than the Asian Champions League, in which Al Ali lost to Ali Tihad in the semi-finals twice. That was still enough to invite the club to the Club World Cup, where they breezed past the Group A. They went past RB Leipzig in the second round, and Valerie left the club because his contract ran out and Alali lost to enter in the quarters. This career is just full of plot twists. It shouldn't surprise you then that Valery took a year off and became the manager of Serbia and lost the Nations League final on penalties against Spain. So close, yet so far. Valery also qualified for the Euros, in which he won over his own nation Ukraine to progress to the knockouts. There he met Scotland, which he won against as well, and lost to penalties to the Netherlands, who took revenge for the 2050 World Cup. Valerie's final task in Serbia was to keep them up in the Nations League A, after which he went on to pursue one more job in club football, at Chelsea, which was seriously threatened with relegation. The Ukrainian turned things around by finishing on safe 10th place, adding a knockout playoff round in the Champions League, to which Valerie guided Chelsea to. Not the trophy, but the chance to partake in one by finishing fourth in the Premier League. And escape to Brentford. That's because Brentford has higher potential than a team from Stamford Bridge, who finished 12th in the next season. And what about the bees? Valerie almost won the title, missing out on it by 4 points. Fourth is also the place in the Champions League league stage. The team came from behind to win over Feyenoord in the round of 16 and Inter in the quarters to lose to Manchester United in the semi-final. But in the second season, we've done it! Valerie won the Premier League for the first time in Brentford's history. If you thought that's it, Brentford also won the Carabao Cup and the FA Cup, making it a domestic treble. So the only trophy remaining is the one mentioned at the start of the video, the mighty Champions League. After topping the league stage, Brentford got past Valencia in the round of 16 and Salernitana in the quarters, but crashed out on the eventual winners Juventus in the semis. Valerie would have retired if he won this one, but it looks like he will keep going. He's already 67 years old, so there is not much time left to win the final piece of silverware. And while finishing in third place in the league is fully understandable, Brentford lost to Tottenham in round of 16. Good news is, the Beasts will play in the Club World Cup, but I think they aren't satisfied with the lack of the UCL. They got knocked out by Atletico in the second round. After a shaky start to season 39, Brentford finished third again, but added the FA Cup to the cabinet 
and almost did the same with the Carabao Cup. What about the main missing silver wire though? Bradford started at 12, finishing third the league stage. Then they got revenge over Manchester United for the Carabao Cup and got past Arsenal in the quarters. Another revenge awaited the semis, where Vojn Ushanovic took revenge on Tottenham for the last season, setting up the biggest game in Brentford's history. Against Torino? Regardless, they've done it and Brentford won the Champions League final for the first time in the history as well as Valery Obanowski added the final missing piece to his trophy cabinet. He wasn't done yet though, finishing third in the league dominated by Arsenal and winning the UEFA Super Cup. In the conquest of defending the Champions League, Brentford went to round of 16 again, beating Saint-Étienne, Inter Milan and Real Madrid en route to the final. As Brentford's about to defend their title, they only needed to beat Atletico Madrid. And they won again, this time on penalties. Brentford wouldn't do the free peat, but instead they went on to win the Premier League, the Super Cup, Carabao Cup, but lost the FA Cup final to Manchester United. And in the final season, the Ukrainian went to Inter, winning the final title of his career, the Italian Serie A. After winning it, he decided it's time to retire. And simply put, what a career it was. Valery has gone and become one of the greatest managers of all time again. He's won this many trophies. That is simply massive. Thank you for watching, as it turned out to be one of the biggest and weirdest managerial careers you've probably seen. If that's the case, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. I will be very grateful for that. If you are looking for more manager career restarts, I also put a legendary Polish coach, Kazimierz Górski, in charge of Legia Warsaw. You might check out how his career went on, with another big plot twist involved.